Welcome to the 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Tommy Johnston. I'm a solutions architect with our EDU team here at AWS. And today we're going to talk about storage for research. So I brought along my friend Tara who's having some trouble. Tara, I hear you're having some trouble with your storage. Tell me what's going on. Yeah, yeah, Tommy. I, I'm a researcher and I have a lot of data and I'm having a lot of difficulty with my storage and keeping things straight. I And I thought it was time to talk with AWS about how they might help. I've heard something about this uh, service called S3 with nearly infinite storage and I feel like I need that in my life right now. Sure. Yeah, before we dive too far down the S3 rabbit hole, tell me a little bit about what you're doing today. I just want to make sure that S3 is the right fit for you. I can do better than that. I can show you. So this is one of my storage devices um, and I have five others like this and I'm running out of space on all of these and I don't really know, you know, where anything is and they're supposed to be encrypted, but I'm not sure I've done that right. And this situation is, is unwieldy. It makes it really hard for me to find stuff or sh to, and to share it with other colleagues at universities. Got it. Yeah, it definitely sounds like S3 could be a good fit for you. S3 is our simple storage service. The first thing to understand, it's an object-based storage. So you'd store objects in containers we call buckets. A bucket would live in a given region. The, the One of the biggest things I'm hearing, it, it, it sounds like you've got individual hard disks there. So you'd have data maybe on several different disks and you say you can't find it. So you could store yeah. everything in, in one bucket. One of the big yeah. benefits with the buckets, there's no capacity on a bucket. So you don't have to allocate, you know, 100 terabytes or anything like that to a given bucket. The, the service is built by consumption. So as you put data in, they charge you for what you use, but you don't have to worry about growing, you know, over allocating to give space to grow into or expanding the size of a bucket if it gets full or anything like that. Uh, that's where you get into that, that seemingly infinite storage of S3. It's, it's big. It's, it's probably in exabytes or yottabytes somewhere up there but uh, lots and lots of, uh, of storage capacity in S3. The other thing I would mention is that it's, it's got redundancy. Uh, so any given region, there are at least three copies of your data in S3. It gets replicated automatically and it's, you, you just pay for the one, uh, say gigabyte of storage, you don't pay for the, the duplicates, but that redundancy gives you what we call 11 nines of durability. So 99.9999 up to, to 11 nines. Suppose you had say 10,000 files stored in an S3 bucket statistically you'd stand to lose one of those files every 10,000 years so it would really help you with the uh, redundancy there make sure you don't lose any data that sounds fantastic i would really like to that that sounds like a huge improvement over what i've got now can can you show me how to do this yeah do you have your aws account today i do i do have an aws account sure well, let me dive through in one of my test accounts here and i can show you exactly how to get started that'd be great so you get logged in, does your management console look something like this? It looks familiar, it looks a little different though. Yeah, I've recently visited uh, services here you may not have seen, this is populated oh. automatically. If you haven't searched for this uh, S3 service or used it recently, you may need to search for it here. So I'll punch S3 okay. in the search block. And that'll pull me up into the S3 console. So you'll see in this particular region or account, I don't have any uh, buckets. You may have buckets that may contain other data from, from your colleagues or whoever else may use that particular AWS account. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just walk through creating a new bucket. The first thing to understand is buckets have names. Those names could be accessed over the uh, internet. They need to be globally unique to make sure every bucket has a unique uh, DNS name that it could hit. So if you wanted to pick a name like Terra, there's probably a, another Terra in the world. So that name's gonna be taken. So we'll t take something like a 10 minute video and we'll give it some random string of numbers here, making sure that we're unique, but you can set this to anything that uh, you'd like. Uh, there are a few um, requirements in terms of uh, naming schemes. So you might get an error if you use some, some invalid characters, but as long as it's unique, It'll be accepted and it actually checks for the uniqueness here at the end. So we'll find out if it's unique when we hit create. I talked about regions. So we've got four regions here in the United States. I'm in the East Coast here, so I might choose Northern Virginia. You're in the West Coast, maybe you choose Oregon. Or you talked about maybe sharing data with your colleagues. So Ohio is our most centrally located region. So if okay. we think we might share data, we'll, we'll put yeah. it in Ohio. 
the biggest point with the regions is just the closer the end users are to the bucket, the faster things will be like transfers and downloads. By default, there's a block public access, unless you know you wanna share uh, data explicitly, we'll leave that enabled by default. You talked about encryption, so let's jump down into this default encryption section here. So if I just tick the one box here and enable encryption, the default encryption key is what I'd recommend. It's a, a key managed by the S3 service. So let's go ahead and hit create bucket and see what happens. All right, so the fact that it completed successfully, that did a check and verified that the name that I put in is accurate. If I had any kind of uh, errors, it would have given an error message there. So you can look, a common one is that the name that you've uh, selected is already taken, something like research is too common. Uh, so again, those bucket names need to be globally unique. But you can see my bucket here is in Ohio and it's got uh, access here that buckets are not public because we left that block public access off. So if we wanted to upload to this bucket, I've just got some example files on my local uh, Mac here. So just take the one file here, and this is just a really example text file. If I drop this in through the web UI, you can see it takes me into the upload. The default settings for the upload are acceptable, or, or what I would recommend. So we'll just hit the button to say upload. And again, with a really small test file, it uploads almost instantaneously. If your files were a little bit larger, it would depend on your upload speed and the size of the file, and it would transfer over time. How did, how did we do the encryption? Is that encrypted? Yeah, so remember we set that default encryption at the bucket level? Yeah. So if I scroll down here on the object, you can see that the server-side encryption is enabled okay. using that SSC S3 key. So yeah, once you set that one the default encryption, it is encrypted by default. Everything after that is kind of a set it and forget it kind of button. This, this looks really easy. I, I think this would work, but I'm not sure that I want to log into the console every single time I want to move data around. Is, is there another way that I could do something like that? Sure. We've got a bunch of different partners in our Amazon partner network, what we call APN. One partner I would recommend is uh, Cyberduck. They make a solution here that lets you um, authenticate with a different method. So you would log in with a key and a secret key to Cyberduck. It's a little bit different than the way you log into the console. Uh, so check out the link I'll send you that can walk you through the process to create a, a key and a secret key along with your user account. Once you get logged in with your key and secret key, you can see through Cyberduck, you see the exact uh, bucket that we have through the console. And if I expand this, you can see there's the research file that I uploaded through the console. I would imagine you're not uploading too many single files, right? I was going to yeah. ask. I have like drives, whole drives to move, not just single files. I don't want to do it one at a time. No problem. So we'll just drag and drop this research data folder and it uploads the entire folder. Again, this is real simple data, so it uploads really quick, but you can see I've got the 10 files there. That would work exactly the same on your local system, again, with an appropriate transfer time based on the size of the files in question. That's great. Now, now one last question. How can I share files with uh, my colleagues at other universities? Yeah, one of the great options here with uh, Cyberduck is this pre-signed URL option. So if you go into this copy URL section, you can see here it's got three different options for pre-signed URL for an hour, 24 hours, or a week. So I'll just, for this example, we'll use this week, and I'll pull up a text editor just to look at what, what came out. You could paste this straight into an email or chat or however you communicate with your colleagues here. But you can see that this uh, link that it created has a bunch of query string arguments. What that does is put the encryption and login embedded into that query string. So anybody that has this particular URL would be able to access that object for the time that you set, in this case, a week. So remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Be careful where you share this link because anybody that has that link would, would have access to that object. That's a great way to share across accounts. That is perfect because I am always struggling to find somebody with an FTP server or a Dropbox that's big enough. So this, this is perfect. This just takes care of the problem. Yeah. Why don't we just recap here? We, we did a few things here. I'll just go over real quick. So we created a bucket. We walked through how you'd create a bucket in a region and set your default encryption. We uploaded an object through the console. 
we used a, a partner application like CyberDuck, uh, authenticated with a key and a secret, and we were able to upload an entire folder. And then we showed how you could share using the pre-signed URL features of CyberDuck. How does that great. sound? It, it sounds fantastic. Thank you, Tommy. So, so this has been like hugely helpful for me. But, but for people who are watching this video, other researchers, how will they get help from someone like you? Yeah. So our EDU department has essays like myself assigned to different territories from coast to coast. For example, I'm assigned to the R1 universities in the Carolinas. But if you reach out to the email and the doobly doo below, they can connect you to the essay that's in your area. And I'm from the research team at AWS, and we help researchers to, to use AWS, so please reach out in the doobly-doo. Awesome. Thanks, Tara. Thanks, Tommy.